Okay, this video is the uh, first of a series of rules briefings uh, to explain the system of the Dark Valley. Um, let's just concentrate on units first. Now, units are pretty straightforward. They can have uh, an attack factor, so it's an attack factor of 3, and a movement factor of 4. They have a NATO symbol on them. Uh, unless they're armour, which they have an armoured silhouette on them. Um, so that is a Romanian infantry, and you can see from the three axes that it's a Romanian infantry 5th Corps. Now, certain units will have multiple uh, factors across the bottom. So this one here has a, a an attack factor of 2, and it's got a defence factor of 4 and a movement of 4. You can see from the fact that it's got a white band across it that it was a two-step unit which is currently being reduced to one step. Other types of units you will see are like this mechanised unit here, this Italian mechanised uh, core. You can tell it's mechanised by the fact that the movement factor 5 here has a white circle around it. Other units um, these armoured units are also mech because they've got a, a white circle around the 8 movement. Uh, you can see that they've also got a hexagon around the uh, attack factor. That is a zone of control. Now, some units like these have zones of control on their full strength size but on their reduced strength size uh, don't have zone of control. Other units of interest are German air bases, that's where your air flotillas or air fleets actually go operate from. You've got a, a bombardment factor there of 4 and a, a range of 12. Bombardment factors are not attack factors as such, there are certain air units that have an attack factor. Um, if you can find, yeah, there's that one that has a plus one attack factor if it's just used uh, to support a combat instead of doing a bombardment. If we have a look at other units here, these are assets. It's an air asset, Romanian air asset, that actually just adds uh, a plus one to an existing combat. They can be used once per turn well I better not explain oh, I need to explain what turns and rounds are first um, just ignore that so that's an air asset with plus one and then we've got a uh, assault German assault gun uh, asset and that's got two values on it it's plus one when it's supporting an attack and plus two when it's supporting the defense um, color coding on the units depicts what nationality they are, so that's Hungarian, that's Romanian, that's Italian, that's German, that's Russian. Russians also have red over there for guard units. Another important unit to find is the HQs. These are the HQs. An HQ has a mechanised movement, but it also has that number in brackets there, that is the command range of the HQ. So during a, um, an activation of that particular formation chip, it can activate every single unit within its command radius. Right. Um, I think of any other units that we really need to explain. Oh yeah, the, the other thing that's important is certain units have these white, sorry, these black dots in the top left hand corner. That means that once they're destroyed, they cannot be rebuilt. Um, I think that's it for units. Oh, yeah, one more. These units under the 
the black tubes here are German supply depots and supply depots are absolutely vital for the German supply. Uh, they move by rolling a dice on a uh, axis depot advance table. They can only move along the rail lines. So that's what the question mark for the movement is. Because you don't know exactly how, how many movement points it's going to get. It depends on the weather as well. Um, seven just indicates its supply projection range. So it can supply any unit within seven hexes of it. It can also supply an HQ that's within seven and that HQ can then supply anything within its command radius, which as we discussed is three. Okay, that'll do for the introduction for units in the Dark Valley.